The end of this section is at hand. And as usual, let's wrap up with a few things to remember. So we looked at operators. And the new quality with these operators was that we were able to evaluate rules uh, relative to a context given by partial interpretations. Right? And of course, this was a big leap towards computation because suddenly we started from nothing, from the empty partial interpretation and computed assignments of true and false to variables. So we started with the fitting operator and quite directly actually derived the operator from the properties expressed by the completion formulas. Then actually, well, we know actually that completion is not enough uh, to characterize stable models. We looked at the concept of unfounded sets and this more or less closed the gap of the fitting operator to stable models by introducing the well-founded operator, which actually we obtained from the fitting operator by plugging in additionally the detection of unfounded sets to make atoms false. So these were the three basic things, but what I, I find important for you to remember as well is the relationship, the relationship of the fitting operator to the supported models, the relationship of the well-founded operator to stable models. In fact, that both notions, supported models and stable models, correspond to total fixed points of the fitting and the well-founded operator. And since the well-founded operator or the total fixed points of the well-founded operator correspond to stable models, they are actually sufficient for propagation in ASP solvers. And last but not least with unfounded sets, in my personal opinion, it's not so much the relation to loops and loop formulas, because after all, loops can be seen as an optimization because one can do the same concepts like loop formulas just by looking at all subsets. What I think is important and what is a common concept of both is this notion of an external support. And I try to stress this in the Blueboard videos, the two, where I try to show that, well, an atom is not unfounded as long as there is a potential external support. And that's more or less the same with loop formulas where you explicitly encode the support. Now, one thing that I find interesting also between loop formulas and unfounded sets is that when we, dis when we form loop formulas, well, we look, we look at, at the program and we form properties. So we have no idea of computation, of partial assignments and so on. So a loop formula is an implication. It says, oh, if one of the atoms in the loop or in the unfounded set is true, then there must be an external support. But when we then look at unfounded sets, there's always a partial interpretation at hand and we can right away look into this partial interpretation and, and see whether there is some external support, right? So because now we're in the middle of the computation and that's another uh, difference between the axiomatic characterization and the operational one. With the axiomatic one, we just characterize the result, not touching the computation at all, while now with the operational characterization, we characterize things, well, by thinking in terms of operations that have accumulated knowledge about the program and we use this knowledge to, well, to form the next result, the, the result of the application of the operator. Wow, that was much long, longer than intended. Anyway, I hope you liked the section, so let's wrap up and say, well, auf Wiedersehen, and tomorrow isn't staying out, I'll be back, without a doubt. So, see you for the next part.